Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today in this Unturned Map Editor tutorial, we're actually going to be looking at something that it doesn't exactly have to do with the map editor, but it has to do with map making overall. So today we're going to be looking at uh, the config.json file that actually controls some settings and what the world is like that you load into in single player or in the server, depending on what difficulty it is. You may not think this is very important as a map maker, but in order to fully understand how to make good maps, you need to know what the player is going to be experiencing when they play your map on different difficulties. This is something that could really help when balancing your map and figuring out how many spawns or how many how difficult the zombie should be and whatnot. So first of all, in order to find the file, what you have to do is navigate to your unturned folder and then go to worlds and then go to single player. In this folder, you should see a config.json. Um, I'm going to look at it here quickly. And as you guys can see, there's just a bunch of settings here that have to do with the different difficulties. Now, this is hard to look at, and obviously, it's not going to be very nice if we stick with this file the entire time. So what I have created is a little chart here that has each of the difficulties and what the values of each of these settings are, depending on the difficulty. And let's just start working through this and discuss how it's actually going to affect the map making process. Alright guys, so before we get too far into this, I just want to let you know that this is not everything that you can find in the config.json file, so if you want to look at some more of the settings, uh, they're definitely there for you to look at. But this is some of the things that I've deemed as important for a map maker to consider. These mostly have to do with things that the map maker can control in some way. So to start out, let's talk about some of the item settings and how they actually differ between the difficulties. So the first thing we have here is the spawn chance for items. I do have a description here that you guys can read along and kind of understand what I'm saying. But essentially, the spawn chance for the items is the chance that an item will spawn. So each node you have has a 30... 0.35% chance to spawn in easy mode. Now as you guys can see this does actually change drastically between easy, normal, and then hard. When you get into hard difficulty the amount of items that actually spawn is quite a lot less. So next we have respawn time. Respawn time represents the amount of time it takes for an item to have a chance to respawn. And when we're talking about 30 here it's probably minutes. I don't think it's seconds because this does apply to single player as well. If it was 30 seconds you'd be seeing items spawn all around you. But pretty much every 30 minutes, there is a 0.35% chance that an item will spawn again in that location in easy mode. And obviously, the time increases as the difficulty gets harder. Next, we've got quality full chance, and we also have quality multiplier. This applies to general items that can have a percentage quality, for example, food and any type of tool that wears down over time. Now, the quality full chance is the percentage chance that the item spawns with 100% quality. And then below that, we've got quality multiplier. This represents the multiplier that is multiplied by a random number generated between 0 and 1 that actually gives the item its quality if it isn't 100%. So for example, if our random number between 0 and 1 is 0.5, we're going to multiply that times 1 and that'll give us an item with 0.5 quality. Now obviously multiplying it by 1 is not going to do anything, hopefully you guys understand basic math. This is not something you really need to worry about as a map maker, but it's good to know the process that's happening in the background. Next we've got gun bullets full chance. Now this relates to the percentage chance that a gun spawns in with all of its bullets in the magazine. Obviously this is pretty low even for easy, but for normal and hard difficulty this actually becomes even worse. So you got a 0.05% chance that your gun will spawn with full capacity. So what we have next is the gun bullets multiplier. This number, once again, is multiplied by a random number between 0 and 1. And this number would give us the percentage of bullets in the clip compared to the capacity of the gun. So for example, let's say that our random number between 0 and 1 is 0.5 again. This number would actually be multiplied by the gun bullets multiplier. So this is going to be multiplied by 0.25. And then the result of that is going to be the percentage of bullets in the clip. So if we pull up a calculator here we've got 0 0.5 times 0 0.25 and then that's 0.125 and that's going to be multiplied by the number of bullets in the clip and that'll give you the total in the mag so if the clip can hold 10 bullets you're going to multiply that by 10 and you end up with 1.25 bullets in a clip. Obviously, you can't have 0.25, so the game's going to either round up or round down. And so at that point, you will get your answer about how many bullets actually spawn in the clip, which in this case would be 1. So essentially what this is doing, if you do the math and you have the best situation possible, let's say that you get the randomized number ends up being a 1, which is the highest possible number between 0 and 1, and then you multiply that 
by the gun bullets multiplier, and then you multiply that by the number of bullets in the clip, you end up actually getting three bullets in there. It really it ends up being 2.5, but assuming that the game rounds up, the maximum number of bullets you could have per clip in medium difficulty is three. And that is unless, of course, the gun spawns with full bullet chance. So moving on to crates bullet full chance, this is the percent chance that the crate of bullets spawns in with maximum bullets inside them. Obviously this is pretty low chances in all difficulties. Also there's the crate bullets multiplier and this sort of works as the ones we talked about before. This is the multiplier that is applied to the random number between 0 and 1. So for example if our random number between 0 and 1 was 0.75 then our crate bullets multiplier would be 1 in normal difficulty and then that is also multiplied by the number of bullets you could have inside of that crate. So in this circumstance, it would be 0.75 times 1 times 40, and that would give us 30 bullets inside of the crate. So that's sort of how all of those numbers work. Lastly, we have the durability setting. What this decides is whether any of these durabilities actually apply. So for example, if the durability is false, that means every gun that spawns in will spawn in with 100% quality and every item that spawns in that has a percentage of quality will also spawn in with 100% quality. If it's true, that means they won't necessarily spawn in with 100% quality. So if you guys notice, everything that spawns in easy mode is 100% all the food's good to eat, everything like that, but when you go to normal, stuff doesn't start spawning like that. That's sort of what the durability changes. So the next category we have is vehicles and the first one in this is has battery chance. So this is the percentage chance that the car spawns with a battery. What's interesting is that the battery charge probably follows the quality full chance and the quality multiplier. I can't guarantee that but I think that probably is the way it works. Also we have has tire chance. That's the chance that each tire spot gets a tire. Obviously in easy difficulty cars always get their battery. Cars always get their tire. Their battery is always 100%. Also we have respawn time. This is actually kind of important because it's good to know that vehicles do have a chance to respawn and because of that if you only have a couple vehicle spawns in the entire map it's not necessarily the worst thing depending on the map. So the next category is zombies and this is actually a pretty important one especially relating to map making. So first of all, we've got spawn chance. This is the percentage chance that a zombie will spawn. We also have loot chance. This is the percentage chance that when a zombie is killed by a player, they will drop loot. This is actually a good one to consider because a lot of times zombie drops from loot are actually really valuable and are really important when it comes to survival because you can get a lot of good stuff off of killing zombies. Next, we've got a bunch of different chances that relate to the types of zombies there are. So for example, the percent chance that if a zombie spawns it will be a crawler there's percent chance that if a zombie spawns it'll be a sprinter and so forth and obviously the three rare ones the flanker the burner and the acid zombie all have a lot lower chances compared to both the crawler and the sprinter and that's because they're obviously harder to fight and Nelson wanted to balance it in that way also something to keep in mind is that if one of these special zombies don't happen to spawn it is guaranteed that a normal zombie will spawn so keep that in mind just because it has zeros in all these places doesn't mean no zombies will spawn it just means every zombie zombie that does spawn will be a normal zombie. Something else that's pretty interesting in this category is the respawn day time. So this is the amount of time during the day that it takes for a zombie to have a chance to respawn. So I think this is also measured in seconds, minutes would be way too long, and so I think every 360 seconds during the day there is a 0.2 chance for a zombie to spawn on easy difficulty. And obviously this doesn't change between each of the difficulties but it does sort of relate to the spawn chance in general. In terms of respawn nighttime, this is the exact same functionality except it just applies to nighttime. Obviously, as you guys can see, zombies spawn a lot more frequently during the night. Every 30 seconds, there's a chance for a zombie to spawn. Next, we've got damage multiplier, and on easy difficulty, this is 0.75. Now, pretty much what this number represents is it is multiplied against the amount of damage that the zombie does. So let's say that the zombie does 50 damage. This would be multiplied by 0.75, and the result resulting number would be the amount of damage it does to a player or a vehicle or something like that. In terms of armor multiplier, this actually works similarly in that the amount of damage taken by the zombie is the amount of damage that the player does to the zombie times the armor multiplier. If a player does 80 damage with some sort of gun or weapon, that's going to be multiplied by 1.25 and that's going to equal the amount of damage the zombie takes. And as you guys can see, these values actually change significantly between the difficulties. And this is one of the things that makes it really hard on normal difficulty when there's a ton of zombies because 
they do a lot more damage, they do 0.25 more damage, and they take 0.25 less damage. And so that becomes really challenging as a player. One of the last settings for zombies that's actually pretty important and is really important to keep in mind is can stun. Now, stunning a zombie is when you hit them in the head or the body, depending on what you're using, and they sort of stop for a moment. Now, if it, the value is true, it means you can stun the zombies in this way. If it's false, as it is in hard difficulty, it means you can't. So in hard difficulty, you cannot stun zombies when you're hitting them in the face and that makes it super difficult because all you can do is sort of keep backing up and you can't really train zombies and farm them in that way. Alright, so we only have a couple more settings. First of all, we've got the animal settings, and the couple things that we have for them is respawn time. Once again, this is the amount of time it takes between the animal having a chance to respawn, and I think this one might be seconds. Now, this is a lot of seconds. It equates to about three minutes. That means that every three minutes, there's a chance for some sort of animal to spawn. Next, we've got damage multiplier, so if the animal is hostile or is willing to fight back, this is the number that is multiplied against the amount of damage they do. So in easy difficulty, it actually decreases the amount of damage. Normal leaves it the same, and hard it increases it by 0.5, so 50%, which is quite significant. In terms of armor multiplier, this is the number that's multiplied against the amount of damage they take. In terms of player settings, we've got a couple things that actually really affects uh, survival. So first of all, we got the food use ticks. This is the amount of time that it takes for the player to have a chance to lose food. So I think this is seconds. So every 350 seconds, there's a chance that the player will lose a certain amount of food. And the amount of food that is possibly lost is controlled by food damage ticks. Now this number represents the upper number for which the amount of food is lost is randomized. So the upper number being 15 means that there's a percent chance that between 15 and 0% of their food is lost every 350 seconds. So pretty much, uh, depending on this amount, it could be moved up and down, but really this doesn't change. What changes is the amount of food use ticks, so the amount of seconds between each time they lose food is what actually changes. Next we've got water use ticks, it's pretty much like the food use ticks. This is the amount of seconds between when a player has a chance to lose water, and then water damage ticks is the upper number for which the amount of water is lost is randomized. It's between 20 and 0% of their water that is lost every 300 20 seconds or 270 seconds or 220 seconds depending on your difficulty next we've got virus infect and this one is actually kind of confusing to me I'm not sure if my description of this is actually appropriate or correct what I'm sort of thinking this is is the amount of infection that a player must receive to start the infection process so this is essentially the amount of damage it takes from a zombie maybe or the amount of infection damage it takes with a zombie giving maybe a partial amount of infection per hit and once you hit this threshold it actually starts the infection process. Now the infection process is described by virus use ticks and virus damage ticks. Virus use ticks controls the amount of time between when a player has a chance to lose infection points and the virus damage ticks is the upper number for which the amount of infection that is lost is randomized. So at this point, it would be between 25 and 0. So obviously, a pretty high chance to lose a lot of infection at a time, especially when your infection really starts going there. Next, we've got armor multiplier for the player. This is the number that is multiplied against the amount of damage a player takes. And the experience multiplier, this is the number that is multiplied against the amount of experience a player earns. Now, the one thing that I like to look at in terms of experience multiplier is that on easy difficulty, you get 50% more experience. Normal, you don't get any more experience, and then hard difficulty, you actually get 50% more experience. So I think Nelson did this as sort of a balancing thing because hard difficulty is significantly harder, and because of that, you get more XP. Now the last setting is the, in the gameplay section, and there's only two things that really relate to map making. And first of all is ballistics. Something to keep in mind as a map maker is that in easy difficulty, there are no ballistics, so you can point and shoot, and it's going to hit wherever you point. In normal and hard difficulty, though, you have to account for bullet drop and bullet time when playing it in survival. Also, the chart setting has to do with whether the chart is able to be seen by the player by default. So in easy difficulty, you're able to see the chart anytime you're in the game. This doesn't even matter if you have a chart in your inventory. In normal and hard difficulty, you're not able to see this. So this is especially important because as a map maker, you need to make sure that you're providing players with charts and GPSs perhaps. This is just going to allow them to understand your map a little bit better and learn their way around. 
Alright, so now that we've seen the entire config.json, or at least the parts that are somewhat relevant to map makers, you may be thinking to yourself, how does this actually apply to me when making maps? Here's part of the issue. A lot of the maps that we see, we feel that people are actually testing and designing them to be used in easy mode. Now this is fine maybe if you expressly want to play in easy mode all the time, but the modes and difficulties are named for a reason. Normal difficulty is named normal because most people should be playing the map in normal difficulty. It's supposed to be the go-to difficulty, the one that you play just every day. So when we're reviewing maps and when we make maps, what we need to do is consider the settings as they are in normal difficulty. So if you start placing a bunch of zombie spawns around and you're like, there's not enough zombies in easy, I need to place more. That's because the spawn chance for easy is 0.2, whereas the spawn chance in normal is 0.25. And then when we go and test this map in normal difficulty, we find out that there's way too many zombies. And there's a good reason for that, because the map maker is testing the map in easy difficulty instead of normal difficulty. So this is really important because you need to make sure that when making your map, you make it appropriate for normal difficulty. That needs to be the difficulty that you actually test your map. And even knowing these settings beforehand can help you place down the appropriate amount of spawns and the appropriate amount of gear. And it may decrease the amount of time it takes you to test the map and fully work out the kinks. So anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something about some of the game mechanics. It's always enlightening to see how the game works underneath and it's good to keep in your mind as you're making these maps. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe if you want to see some more. I will see you all later.